Yeah, we have a, a new brochure. It's called A Mountain of Radioactive Waste 70 Years High. And December 2nd, 2012 will mark the 70th anniversary of Enrico Fermi splitting the atom at the University of Chicago in a squash court beneath the football stadium at Stagg Field during the Manhattan Project. That was to build the atomic bomb that was then dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki, Japan. The waste from Fermi's experimental reactor has never been dealt with. The first cupful of split atoms, the first cupful of high-level radioactive waste in human history has not been permanently dealt with in any safe or sound manner. It is buried in a forest preserve in southwest Chicago called the Palos Forest Preserve under a mound of earth with a few stone markers to warn people about it with a bike path going right past it. So families could, uh, without knowing it, have a picnic very close to the first high-level radioactive waste in human history. So in the past 70 years, the United States has built up about uh, 12,000 to 15,000 tons of defense-related high-level radioactive waste. That's from the weapons complex and from research reactors. Um, on the commercial side is the mother load of high-level radioactive waste. That's uh, currently about 67,000 metric tons. So we have enough radioactive waste in this country to have filled the Yucca Mountain dump by the spring of 2010, only it will never open. So we don't have our first dump, but our first dump is full in the United States. And everything we've made since spring of 2010 is excess to the first dump. So we need a second dump. We don't even have a first dump. So it's a real uh, mess. It's a real dilemma what to do with what already exists. The real answer is stop making it. The only answer for radioactive waste is to not make it in the first place. Because once you make it, you have to keep it out of the environment for a million years into the future. That's a very difficult challenge, to put it mildly. And it may be beyond our ability to do, actually. And a lot of these proposals, like in Finland, like in Sweden, at Yucca Mountain, this was a glorified way of sweeping this problem under the rug. And future generations can deal with it. At Yucca Mountain, incredibly, the Environmental Protection Agency regulations would have allowed for, once you read the fine print, a, uh, a cancer incidence rate among uh, downstream populations of something like one in four. And because women are nearly twice as vulnerable to radioactivity as men, in those critical groups, those maximally expo exposed individuals, the, the incidence of cancer in women could have been as high as one in two due to the leaking radioactivity from the Yucca Mountain dump. And then, you know, about half of those cancers would be fatal. So this is a very, uh, you know, nightmarish way of trying to sweep our problems under the rug. It will doom future generations to massive radioactive contamination if these dumps leak. So we have no good answer. So your question's a really good one. Why would we build another generation of nuclear power plants. It's the first order for a nuclear power plant since 1978. And in fact, that order was canceled. In fact, every single order for a nuclear power plant in the United States made after October of 1973 was eventually canceled, abandoned, permanently postponed, delayed. There hasn't been a so-called successful order since October 1973, nearly 40 years ago. So here we go with two proposed new reactors in Georgia, two proposed new reactors in South Carolina. And guess what? The utilities don't want to take the financial risks. So at Georgia, the financial risks are being borne by both federal taxpayers and state ratepayers. In South Carolina, the nuclear utility thinks it can build the project just by risking the money of state ratepayers. And they have actually upped the electricity bills five times in South Carolina just in the past couple years to pay for this, these two new reactors in South Carolina. In Georgia, the two new reactors uh, have put or may soon put federal taxpayers on the hook for $8.3 billion in the form of a federal loan guarantee, which makes U.S. taxpayers the co-signer on the loan for the project. So if the project uh, goes belly up, uh, defaults on its loan repayments, then taxpayers get to repay that loan to the tune of $8.3 billion. 
but in fact the loan itself is coming from taxpayers, from an institution called the U.S. Finance Bank, 100% federal taxpayer funded. So they have us coming and going on these new reactors in Georgia. And it's quite telling that Wall Street private investment firms will not risk their own money on these projects unless taxpayers bear ultimate responsibility. And then they'll gladfully get involved because they have no skin in the game and the nuclear utilities have no skin in the game. So in the financial world, you heard a lot of talk since 2008, since the economic meltdown, which is a nuclear term actually, of uh, moral hazard, economic, financial, fiscal, moral hazard. So what could be more morally hazardous than atomic reactors uh, for which the proponents bear little to no financial risk? And of course, to that economic moral hazard, you have to add radiological hazard because if, this, if these actually get built and operated, that's what they'll mean. The particular reactor designs in South Carolina and Georgia are called the AP-1000, which is a Toshiba Westinghouse reactor design. It stands for Advanced Passive. It's actually 1,100 megawatts electric, very large in size. And wouldn't you know, there is a fatal design flaw identified by the Environmental Coalition who are fighting them across the Southeast. And their expert witness, uh, Arnie Gunderson of Fairwinds Associates in Vermont, who's become quite an international uh, expert on major networks like CNN in regards to Fukushima Daiichi uh, over the past year, he did the report on the AP-1000 and he identified a very serious design flaw where if there is a breach of the primary radiological containment, the so-called advanced passive safety features would actually pump the radioactivity into the environment. What's supposed to pump the heat and the pressure away would actively pump the radioactivity in the environment if that primary uh, radiological containment structure is breached in any way.